COVID-19 forced teachers all across our country to move instruction from the classroom to the internet. In tonight's School at Home series, ABC6 News anchor Miguel Octavio and team members from the Post Bulletin share how teachers are keeping students informed amid the pandemic. Teachers are working harder than ever and having more sleepless nights thinking about their students. Do they have internet access? Are they surfing the web for hours? Are they reading their materials every day? And how do I know they're safe or have food to eat if I can't get a hold of them? Three teachers allowed me to peek into their virtual classrooms and share the challenges they face. Albert Lee Area Schools awarded Paula Olson Teacher of the Year in April. I truly, truly didn't think that it would be me today. We caught up with Paula her first time back in the classroom. It was just kind of dark and sad and lonely walking down the hall. And yet at the same time, it felt very familiar and good. She's taught for 19 years, but these two months have been some of her toughest. I was so proud of them. She teaches at Albert Lee's Area Learning Center. Our students traditionally come from some pretty difficult circumstances. Those circumstances complicated by distance learning. They need to know we're here and we, we really truly care about them. But she's determined to help students get their diploma. I'm pleased with how so many students didn't completely give up their thought or their hope of graduation. Like Paula, Michael Olson hasn't been inside his classroom for weeks. Packing up a classroom at the end of the year is always a tough time, an emotional time, because you're saying goodbye to that group. Hey, fifth graders. Mr. Olson here. The world threw something at us that, that no one six months ago knew was even a possibility. He teaches fifth graders at Falwell Elementary. He's returning his students' belongings, a chance to finally see them face to face. It's, it's been hard for me to sit at a computer all day long. Even though I'm doing fun things with students, supporting them, giving them feedback and things like that, it's, it's been a big change. A change he hopes won't compromise they're learning. Our biggest fear is that we're going to start losing kids just because the, the novelty of it has worn off. Another challenge, tending to their families and their students at the same time. And I want to be available to them as much as I can, uh, but I have two girls at home with me and six kids on the weekend, and so life is crazy. It's just like every family in my classroom, you know, I have to make it work with my family too. But teachers know their students are counting on them. Regardless, you know, teachers are positive people and, and we're going to make the best of whatever situation it is that we're in. I'm thankful to have this job. I'm thankful that it keeps me very busy. Um, it helps pass the time and I, I know that I'm doing important work. Because their work could change someone's life. It doesn't matter how it happens, if it's distance learning or if it's a traditional classroom. If we can help that student get to graduation, and get that diploma in their hand, then they have their future. Some teachers say they still haven't seen or heard from certain students since March. Their days are stretched thin, trying to make sure their schedules match the other families, keeping in mind they have families of their own. But they've also found creative ways to keep students engaged online. Tomorrow night, we'll explore some of the tech issues families face in part three of our School at Home series. Miguel Octavio, ABC 6 News. Miguel, thank you. You will find deeper coverage of this story at postbulletin.com and in Tuesday's print edition of the Post Bulletin.